Hello, there. A very good morning and welcome to the update from the People's Progressive Party Civic for this morning. I'm joined today by Nigel Darumlal, uh, Central Committee member of the PPP and, of course, a candidate of the People's Progressive Party Civic. Nigel, good morning and welcome to the program. Thank you, Edward, and good morning to you and your viewers and listeners. All right. We want to um, spend some time this morning to focus on the controversy um, manufactured controversy, I, I would want to say, um, involving Lowenfield and his role at the Guyana Elections Commission. Um, and this is in light of, we know that Lowenfield took it upon himself um, to present numbers contrary to an advice uh, from the chair of the Guyana Elections Commission. Um, those numbers where he would have disenfranchised essentially over 115,000 persons. Um, since then, we have seen a number of videos which are akin to evidence surfacing of Lowenfield uh, conflicting his own claims now. Um, if we take, for example, him in 2015 saying that it's virtually impossible or it's impossible for um, voter impersonation, but still in 2020 decided to um, disenfranchised over 115,000 persons claiming um, or, or supporting those those claims of, of fraud by the AP and UAFC. Uh, well, Edward, uh, since March 2nd, well, even prior to March 2nd, on December 21, 2018, when the no confidence motion was passed against the AP and UAFC, we have seen a a brain freeze in many of the, the leaders of the AP and UFC in how they have uh, used arithmetic to mismanage the constitution, to misinterpret the constitution. And in almost a year and 19, uh, a nine, a nine, a seven months, we have seen how they have destroyed the integrity of our country and the dignity of the people of Guyana. Lowenfield also has a history in all of this. When the house to house registration that he embarked upon in 2019 as a means of stalling the elections immediately after the vote of no confidence, you recall elections ought to have been held within three months after the vote of no confidence. Those elections were put on hold because GCOM was not prepared. It took GCOM almost one year to get prepared to host elections. And since then, Lowenfield, the Secretariat, the Commission, all the political parties, the international observers, they claim that the elections, and for myself, I, I operated in Region 2. Uh, and we had a seamless day of operations with the, with, 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 with the elections. Across the country, the report, the report was that the elections were free and fair and credibly held. The elections were also free, fair, and credibly held on March 2nd. From the 4th of March is when things went all right after the AP and UAFC found that they have lost the elections. Fast track to just over two weeks ago, when Lowenfield presented those fictitious numbers, those fraudulent numbers. And if you permit me, I think Lowenfield has basically criminalized the elections process and criminalized the elections of March 2nd, 2020, to the extent of us not able to have the proper, the legitimate, the lawful, and the constitutional government in place up to this point in time, and pre president at, at, up to this point in time. Lowenfield has been equivocating, he has been prevaricating, he has been disbelieving, and he has been challenged with the tr truth over the last number of weeks. The, his first, uh, first he had presented the Domingo's declarations to uh, the commission, which as you're aware were held in abeyance. 
those were fraudulent as well. Then he presented his first report despite being instructed on the parameters of the report, presented one contrary to what the commission required and over 275,000 votes or voters were disenfranchised by him. A few days after that figure magically became 115,844. So no one knows how Lowenfield has come up with these numbers. But what we know for a fact is that what Lowenfield has done is commit fraud on the electoral process in Guyana. He has also been in, in, in subordination of the chairperson of GCOM, to whom he reports, and you mentioned these videos that are circulating now. In 2015, he was unequivocal that he reports to the commission, he reports to the chair of the commission. Now, in 2020, he has taken a 180 degree. He is about turn, and now he, he is presenting to the commission what he feels like without any regard to the reporting authority. So that also is an area that we would have to, to focus on. And I would hope that the chairperson of GCOM, who has worked on a tremendous pressure oh, since she became the, the chair of GCOM, and over the last four months, especially since the elections, that the chairperson takes this matter in hand and begin the discipline low and field and to overrule all of the fraudulent numbers that Olo and Field presented to the commission and find someone within the secretariat to present a proper report to the commission so that we can have a declaration done and the swearing in of the legitimate, legal, lawful, constitutional president, Dr. Irfan Ali. Um, Nigel, I want to go back to Lowenfield's um, position that he's been taken, a position which I see uh, Grange and the others are supporting, but he is empowered. He First and foremost, he claimed to be a constitutional officer, which is the farthest from the truth. Um, the commission is a constitutional body and he is an employee of that commission. And he said, when he prepared the report, the second report, he said as constitutionally mandated, um, he prepared that report based on his uh, constitutional mandate. But when we look at a video that surfaced yesterday, for example, and he sought to give the impression as though he is not obligated to take instructions and directives from the commission, but rather his powers and his role is derived from the constitution. But when we look at that video surface yesterday, this is just February, 2019. Uh, Mr. Lowenfield went at length to explain to the press that he cannot act. And I think he was talking in, in, in a situation where he's requested uh, to meet with officials of uh, political parties, et cetera, et cetera. But he cannot act unless he's advised by the commission. He made it clear that all his actions are dependent on instructions and or advice from the commission. One would want to, to, to conclude maybe that at that time, Lowenfield was wearing his professional cap and he was, he was being accurate in terms of his role responsibilities and who are the persons um, responsible for directing him. But I think within the last few weeks or maybe the last few months, uh, prior, just prior to and um, after the elections uh, up until now, he would have probably put on his political cap where he became an agent and started acting as an agent of AP and UAFC, where he's now saying that he don't need to listen to the commission. Well, it, it is obvious that Lowenfield is in the authorship of the rigging of elections in Guyana. And I think that the plan that they had prior to, to the, the elections in March, their plan was to use the house to house registration as, as a means of disenfranchising people. They have, and also as a means of uh, strengthening their hand in the database. When that failed after the elections were held on March 2nd, 
I think Lowenfield and others went into overdrive. And what we find happening right now is uh, an analogy to uh, foot and mouth disease. And, and he is basically being, you know, swallowing his own words, putting his, his foot into his mouth and reversing all that he stood for as a principal professional person in early 2019. It is obvious that he is involved in the rigging of elections in Guyana. And you know that rigging of elections is a criminal offense and which we intend to pursue and we must pursue as a matter of uh, ensuring that we put this matter to rest once and for all in, in, in Guyana and for the future of our country. We also know that uh, Lowenfield, when I was uh, on, on, on a similar program just last week, Lowenfield is a creature of the GCOM, of the Guyana Elections Commission. Lowenfield derives his authority from the representation of the People Act and from the Electoral Law Amendment Act of 2000. The constitutional agency that conducts elections in Guyana is the Guyana Elections Commission. The, there are seven constitutionally appointed commissioners, free from the government, free from the opposition, and a chair jointly chosen between the opposition leader and the president. Lowenfield is a statutory officer. Lowenfield reports to constitutional officers. So Lowenfield basically arrogated unto himself or arrogated to himself the constitution as his cloak or, or to isolate him from all the skullduggery that he was involved in. The mere fact too that it has now been brought to open that he is a statutory and not a constitutional officer, that it is his duty to follow the directive of the chair of GCOM. And the chair of GCOM gave that directive where she would like the report that Lewenfield ought to have presented be based on the recount and it must be based on the tabulation, a, ma a matrix of the 10 declarations per region and also a summary of the observation reports. The chair never asked Lewenfield for his opinion. The recount order Order number six, they never requested that Lowenfield must present his opinion to the chair or to the commission in the form of the, the, his report. So Lowenfield, for all intents and purposes, very clear, he is stepping out of his jurisdiction and he ought to face the consequences of it. And I believe like many others have, have, have been saying, that Lowenfield is a threat to the democracy of this country. Lowenfield is a threat to the constitution of Guyana, and he must face the consequences as a result of his actions. But, Nigel, when you look at the sum total of all of this, um, the actions of Lowenfield, the actions of Mingo, and, and the fact that uh, Ranger himself would have um, said that he endorsed the report by Lowenfield. Which, which led to the disenfranchisement of over 115,000 persons. Clearly, I don't think Lowenfield, and I don't think any Guyanese um, is of the belief Lowenfield was acting alone. Um, and I hope that, that the, the, the private criminal charges will be an opportunity for Guyanese to get to know exactly who are the others behind this attempt to steal uh, the elections. Um, unfortunately, Lowenfield has been do dodging the, the, the court. Well, the, the, the long arm of the law will always get to the criminals. So irrespective of how he's hiding or how he's dodging, the long arm of the law will reach Lowenfield. So it is only a matter of time before he's accosted. We have said from the outset, since the rig, try the, the the attempts to rig the elections start to manifest on March second, 
that there is a cabal involved, a group of people. We are also aware that Granger is involved because of what his public, public pronouncements have, have since been. We are aware that his chief spokesperson, Harman, Walder, Nagamutu, Ramjatan, who, has, who seems to be an inveterate disbeliever right now. We have seen other elements of their leadership and uh, quote unquote, to use the term of the, the current chair of CARICOM, the assorted John sources who are involved in an attempt to rig the elections of Ghana. Lowenfield is just a cog in the wheel, but Lowenfield has an important role because as the chief elections officer, inevitably they will use him and his numbers to deny the will of the electorate. And that is what they have done up to this point in time. But I think that they, have, they themselves have realized that they have lost the elections and they are losing even their attempts to rig the elections after four months. The Caribbean Court of Justice met last Wednesday, heard our arguments, and more than likely, it is my firm belief that the Caribbean Court of Justice will assume jurisdiction on that matter and also uphold our appeal and throw out the decisions of the Guyana Court of Appeal on, on, on their taking jurisdiction on a matter that they do not have jurisdiction on. We also believe that Granger is being led by his nose in, in, in all of this. And they've come to a point where very soon there is going to be an implosion of the APN UAFC if there hasn't been one already. And we expect that immediately after the Caribbean Court of Justice rules on, on, on Wednesday, 3 p.m., that the chair of GCOM will summon a meeting of the commissioners and once again request the proper report from law and field or from the secretariat or from an officer within the secretariat in whose uh, repository is the, the authority to present that report. And if that is not done, then I hope the chair will take it upon herself to make sure that the proper report is presented to the commission and thereafter the constitutional things are done so that the lawful legitimate government is sworn in. Um, sorry, sorry, Eddie. Oh, go ahead, go ahead. No, I, I, I was saying too that uh, in, and, and whilst all of this is happening, the, chief, uh, the principal magistrate also issued an, a, 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 a warrant that low and feel uh, that the court bailiff present to low and feel or serve to low and feel the, the private criminal charges and that low and feel must present himself in court. We would hope that those statutory officers who are securing low and feel at this point in time, that they ensure that they work with the law and not against the law and allow the court bailiff to present or to serve Lowenfield with those charges. Up until this point in time, based on the news reports that I've been reading, Lowenfield is in hiding and the charges were not served on him because they were uh, obstructed by uh, elements of the Guyana police force who are securing Lowenfield. I, I stand corrected on that, but insofar as I've read in the newspapers and in the mainstream online media, the, the charges could not have been served because they were uh, the bailiff was obstructed. But the long arm of the law will, will get to low and feel that all those who are involved in, in rigging elections in Guyana. That, that is a, a commitment I think all of us that believe in a democratic country and, and are, 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 are sacrificing everything that we have to ensure that democracy prevails over dictatorship. That is a commitment I think that we have all made. Um, Nigel, I want to move back quickly um, before we wrap up to the, the Caribbean Court of Justice and GCOM. And I want to add to what you said that despite um, the, the order of the court, the CCJ, is that GCOM should, should um, put a hold on everything that it's doing until the matter is uh, resolved or completed in the court. Whatever way the court rules, however, 
does not impact what GCOM needs to do, and that is to declare the valid votes, the, the 460,000 plus valid votes. So whether or not the, the CCJ um, rule in favor of or against um, the appeal, the fact of the matter is there is nothing that preventing GCOM or will prevent GCOM from presenting the accurate report of the votes cast in favor of the PPPC, um, 236,336, and of course the votes cast in favor of APNU, 217,920. So um, while GCOM has to await the ruling of the court um, to, to probably have those orders lifted, the fact of the matter is there is really no relationship between what GCOM has to declare really and what the court rules. So because I, I think there might be some confusion in the minds of people thinking that if the court rules one way or the other, uh, GCOM may, may be directed, but there is no relationship really um, save and accept the fact that the court has put a stain to all the actions of GCOM. Yes, Eddie, and, and you're totally correct. Um, the, the ruling of the court is not, or the decisions of, of the, the um, declaration should not be contingent on the ruling of either the Court of Appeal, as they did, or of the Caribbean Court of Justice, as they will do. However, I think that uh, the reason why it is important to, 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 to have these matters cleared up is because, one, the Caribbean, the, in, 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 in our legal interpretation, the, uh, the Guyana Court of Appeal does not have jurisdiction to hear a matter of this nature. An elections petition in an elections court is what must hear this matter. And so we feel that the Caribbean, uh, the Guyana Court of Appeal was, was uh, erroneous in their, uh, in their judgment and to arrogate onto themselves jurisdiction in a matter that they do not have jurisdiction on. They, they have also, uh, we feel that, uh, as Lowenfield indicated, in, in his letter to the, the chair of the commission, that he is presenting a report based on advice, quote unquote, of the, the ruling of the Guyana Court of Appeal. And uh, we do not want those loopholes to be created. We are already clear that the representation of people act outlined what a valid vote is. It also outlined what an invalid vote is. A rejected or a vote that uh, was, uh, they, they did not have the authenticity. Those were what we call rejected votes, either spoiled ballots or, or rejected ballots. So it was already covered on March 2nd. It was also covered during the course of the recount. So the only things that have been declared so far, the 460,000 votes altogether are valid votes or, or votes cast. So there was no need for the Guyana Court of Appeal to further interpret what the constitution says in terms of votes cast. And so we want that matter to be addressed. And that is why that appeal was made to the Caribbean Court of Justice. And as long as the Caribbean Court of Justice takes jurisdiction of the issue and rules in our favor, then that zeroes out all the attempts of low and feel to go beyond the arithmetic and to start to become a constitutional magician. And, 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 and you're correct again, too, that irrespective of how they rule, it is now incumbent upon the chair of GCOM, and, and we have already said that, that the, uh, the recount has been completed. The declarations must be made on the recount. All the credibility issues have been addressed before the elections on the day of the elections. And so there is no issue about that. The international community has said so. The uh, Secretary of State of the US, he has also indicated in video that he has put on instruction to his uh, officers to ensure that those who uh, rig or co quote unquote rigged elections in Guyana or those who, not, who do not honor the will of the people 
of Guyana that they must be held accountable and that the declarations of the results must be based on the report. The CARICOM ob observer mission, the scrutineer mission, they have said very clearly that there is an inescapable conclusion that the elections were free, fair, and credible, and there is no reason to, to object at this point in time, but to have a declaration done based on the recount figures. The ABC, the European Union, the Commonwealth, CARICOM, like I said, the private sector in Guyana, the Chamber of Commerce, all like-minded organizations and people who believe in freedom and democracy have all stood by a declaration based on the recount. And that's all that we're asking for. And we hope that the chair of GCOM, and, and, and we believe that she will, will as a, a, a former justice, and also someone who has, despite the, the environment in which she has been operating, has basically stood by the law all this time. And, and we hope that she will continue to stand by the law and the constitution, as we have been doing. And we believe that those on the side of the law will prevail in, 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 in due course. And, and we hope that in short due course. So all the play acting that Granger and the drama that he has created with, with all that he has done over the last four months, I think is gonna to come to an end very soon. And let us hope it comes to an end to the benefit of our country and that he does not remain illegitimate, unlawful, unconstitutional, and the people of Guyana will be affected by his selfish uh, means. So I think next week is going to be a critical week for us. Well, not next, next week, but by this weekend is gonna be very critical for us. I would want to think by Friday, we're going to have a clear direction in, in, in terms of how we're moving forward. Um, I agree with you, Nigel, uh, the fact that, and I think we've, we've time and again gone through this of what is required by GCOM, the position already taken by the chair of GCOM and the commission by, extent, by extension, because the commission met and examined that first report of Lonefield before instructions were given to him to stick with the numbers of the recon. I want to add as well, before we wrap up, the fact that all these concerns um, that the AP and UAFC has been raising with regards to um, their baseless claims of, of, of voter impersonation, uh, my, the, in terms of migrant voting, dead, dead voters, etc., those are issues that they will have an, and they have an opportunity to ventilate and they should do so through the right channel, which is an elections petition. And so just to add quickly what you said about the appeals court, one has to understand the reason why the PVP has taken the decision to appeal um, the decision of the, the Court of Appeal, because you don't want to set a precedence. You may see very well if you allow GCOM and GCOM prepared to declare based on the, the recount numbers, the APNU may run back to the court to say, tell Lowenfield what to, de to declare and so forth. So you have to guide against those. And this is something that is being done in the interest of Guyanese, in, in the interest of democracy. Because if you allow the court, um, despite operating out of its jurisdiction and you allow law and field to have this way, then maybe in the future we don't need elections. We just call up law and field or somebody and say, decide who, who's going to be the next government. So we have to guard against those. Yeah, I, I totally agree with you. And I, and, and I think that, um, you know, very simply put, that is exactly what, what uh, happened. And um, you would recall too that the Court of Appeal of Guyana actually granted in majority that 32 was not the major uh, sorry that 33 was not the majority of 65 and the court of appeal also in one of their judgments in uh, also said that the chair of gcom was not unilaterally appointed that is the former justice retired uh, james patterson and now we have this issue of them taking jurisdiction on an issue that they do not have jurisdiction on it's already a precedent so it, it is it is something that it is not just for now, but like you said, it is for the future. And um, I, I I would hope that you know everyone continues to, to, to remain patient. We have been been patient, uh, but the most important thing is we have to get rid of this dictatorship that is before us. Uh, there is absolutely no way in 2020 that anyone in this world is going to allow elections to be rigged and sit idly by whilst that is happening. 
And I'd like to commend all those who have stood by the, the, the democratic will of the people of Guyana. And we hope that they will continue to stand by us as we transition into a democratic government. And, and, and so the people of Guyana will be held in safe hands in a democracy. And I, I, I am certain that uh, Dr. Irfan Ali as president will uphold the constitution as we have all been in, 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 in over time in the People's Progressive Party Civic. We have all stood by the constitution. We also know too that uh, GCOM, for example, they have their mandate and we would like GCOM to remain as a professional organization. I'm sure there are very many good people still in the Secretariat of GCOM who do not countenance what Lowenfield and Mingo have done. And we look forward to them continuing to build up the credibility of that organization moving forward. We, we, we expect that when we get back into government, that we are going to develop this country based on the rule of law and everyone who is against the rule of law must be held accountable. We have not yet spoken about the hundreds of billions of dollars that were expended by this regime through corrupt deals. That is something else that we'll have to speak about when we get into government. On, on, on my closing uh, thoughts to you as well, I'd like to also encourage my Guyanese uh, citizens, our people, to continue to uphold the rules that govern COVID, that is maintain social distancing, wear a mask. You know, it, it is untenable what is happening in the management of the COVID situation in Guyana by Nagamutu, Harman and others. People are dying, people are being infected by the, in the droves, regions one, seven, nine, you know, the, the Amerindian areas, they are now heavily affected. And I would hope that more resources are put into those areas so that our Amerindian people, the indigenous people of Guyana, the forest peoples of Guyana can get over this uh, crisis, this health crisis that we have as in other areas of our country too. Uh, we, we, we have to make sure that uh, we stay safe, follow the procedures and don't become too excited about everything else that is happening around you. Your health is also very important. We need healthy people to work with us to develop this country and rest assured as soon as we get into government, we are going to arrest this COVID situation and hopefully get it under control as quickly as possible. Thank you very much, uh, Nigel Darmlal, for joining me this morning um, to provide an update to the people of Guyana so that they understand where we stand and to clarify um, the misinformation, the propaganda that is being spread by the cabal, um, all in a desperate attempt to hold on to power, um, to undermine democracy, and to um, thwart the will of the people. Again, thanks for joining me this morning, Nigel. And to all of you, I want to say thanks for being part of the program.